Good morning, thank you everybody. And my name is Jacobo, uh, a software engineer at Igalia. We are an open source consultancy company. And uh, we'll talk, uh, I'll talk you here about SharePoint and LibreOffice interoperability through the CMIS protocol. Let me first uh, start uh, introducing briefly my company and the LibreOffice project, and then I will talk to you about the CMIS protocol. Uh, we will see how to write your own client using the LibCMIS project. And then we see from a practical point of view, from the end user point of view, how to connect uh, to your SharePoint server uh, from LibreOffice. And later we will take a look at what are we preparing for the f uh, future releases of LibreOffice regarding CMIS support. So, uh, uh, as I said, I'm a software engineer at Igalia. We are an open source consultancy spe uh, specialized in, uh, well, open source technology. We, are, we have already 14 years of experience in the field, and we have contributions to well, all those projects. We are mainly uh, focused on client-side web technologies. We have contribution to WebKit, Chromium, uh, V8, JavaScript Core, but we have also hackers on multimedia, accessibility, and, of course, what has brought me here on the open documents field. About the LibreOffice project, may, uh, you may probably know that LibreOffice is the main uh, open source uh, office suite and it's backed by the Document Foundation. which uh, The community is a healthy mix of volunteer and corporate contributors. The foundation behind uh, takes care of that there is no single ver vendor driving uh, the direction of the project. And uh, regarding our contributions, we have uh, 100 monthly committers and around 2,000 commits, 7 million lines of code, and a code base that uh, dates back 20 years in, uh, in uh, uh, it carries 20 years of history. This is uh, an actual comment found in one of the project readme's fi readme files. That says that we might have some lines that date back to November of 1990. That means this is earlier than the kernel project, for example. So well, let's uh, talk about the CMIS protocol now. CMIS stands for Content Management Interoperability Services. It's an abstraction layer for interoperability across uh, enterprise content management systems, ECMs in short, uh, using web protocols. ECMs, as you said, are uh, used to store and structure data in the form of mm, documents, uh, pictures, video, uh, opposed to, in, uh, in opposition to structured data that uh, it is stored in databases. Uh, CMIS um, pro uh, provides an, an abstraction for the main operations found in most, CM, um, in most ECM uh, servers. It provides a common data model for, for with typed files and folders and properties, services for adding and retrieving documents, and it may provide services for access control, uh, version control, relations, and queries. This is up to the implementation, uh, up to the server implementation. Uh, your servers can, def uh, can define a set of capabilities, and that's what clients need to know to uh, interact with them. And uh, the protocol defines a set of bindings with uh, SOAP, uh, the uh, RPC-style uh, standard for web services, a more restful approach using Atom Pub. And uh, from the 1.1 revision of the protocol, uh, it has been added a JSON binding to. Uh, it is not that extended yet because most of the servers implement the 1.0 version of the CMIS protocol. And the main model, the main model tries to be, uh, as I said before, an abstraction for the common op objects and operations found in ECMs. Uh, the repository is the topmost object, and a uh, server can have any number of uh, repositories with a minimum of one. 
repositories are also also the, uh, expose the capabilities of the server. For example, you query the repository to know if versioning, for example, is available or uh, other uh, optional parts of the protocol. You have objects, which is the abstraction of the actual contents in the uh, ECM. And objects have types. There are two basic types of folders and documents. Those types have properties. Uh, folders and documents provide a common, uh, a basic set of them, uh, basically name, uh, modification, and creation dates, etc. And uh, more types can be added, and in you can build hierarchies with that. For example, you could have a an invoice type which extends the document type and adds a property uh, like. Um, invoice number, so you can use it to query uh, for queries, for example, later. The two basic types of folders and documents. Uh, folders, uh, there's always one f a special folder in a repository, which is the root folder, and it has an no parent. And there's an operation in the repository to get the its root folder, and you can start navigating through it. Uh, folders define a hierarchy. It's uh, basically uh, uh, the same concept that directories in a f file system. And as I said before, they have a set of standard properties. Documents uh, have also th some standard properties, and more importantly, have a content stream with a MIME type, uh, which you can query to get the actual contents in the document. Uh, this is a Mm, these are some uh, services exposed by CMIS uh, servers. Uh, you have the repository server. You can use it to list and get uh, properties of repositories. Uh, the re uh, repository services also expose the available types in your server in case you, in case you have uh, added your own types. And as I said before, uh, you can query the, ser the repository service to know about the capabilities of your server. You have a navigation server uh, service to be able to browse the folder hierarchy. You have an object service to perform the create, update, delete operations on documents and folders. Uh, you can access uh, objects by their object ID, which all of the objects will have, or by the path, which you can get from the navigation service. And optionally, but very, a very important one, is the uh, versioning service, which uh, will allow you to create and access different revisions of one document. Uh, not all, uh, only, well, only documents are versionable. For example, you, you can't have versionable folders with different contents uh, uh, through the time. It's not supported by the protocol. And uh, among the documents, uh, it might be that only some of them, some certain types of documents are versionable. There is a, a versionable flag you can use to check for that capability. Um, this is a short uh, list of uh, server implementations, that, but there are plenty of them nowadays. Uh, we have uh, uh, open source ones like Alfresco or Magnolia, and closed source ones like uh, the IBMs or SharePoint, uh, which, which I uh, was I, I came here to talk about, and uh, this is a li uh, short list too of client implementations. Uh, you have open source ones like Drupal, LibreOffice, and SharePoint is here too because it I it also can act as a CMIS client, for example, and you it can access seamless seamlessly to contents available in a different C uh, ECM that implements the CMIS protocol. And this is a typical interaction between a CMIS client and a, ser and a server. Your client will likely want to get the list of repositories of the server, li uh, expose them, uh, know about their capabilities. Then once uh, you have se uh, selected one of them, you will like to get the root folder of that repository and then navigate through the folders until you reach uh, the document you want. 
then check it out, uh, create a new uh, private working copy and get its contents and work on it and then you can check it in uh, uh, with the modifications and adding a new revision to that content in the server. So this is um, uh, a briefing about the protocol. Uh, now we will see a practical example of a client uh, implementation using the LibCMIS project. Well, LibCMIS is a C++ client library for the CMIS protocol and it's an open source project with a uh, varied uh, licensing options. It, uh, it's one of the options is LGPL so you can link it from uh, proper proprietary uh, development. I'm not encouraging you to do uh, uh, proprietary development, but there's a you can you have the option there, and it's a project uh, that has been started and maintained by the LibreOffice community. But uh, it's been decided that to keep it separate so everyone could benefit from it, and, and that's the website. You can uh, get the source and start playing with it. And what C LibCMIS provides to uh, Developers, uh, you have a s plain C and C++ APIs with classes abstracting the CMIS entities I explained you before. Uh, you will have a specific implementation for selected servers, including SharePoint, but it's uh, usually transparent for the uh, developer using libcmis. And you will have a command line client tool you can use to connect to your server, check the connection, do basic operations, and also you can take a look at the source of that client, uh, that common line client tool to uh, in, uh, looking for inspiration for your own uh, development. So it's a good test case and also a good example of a client uh, implementation. Uh, what I will I would like to show you some uh, code examples that correspond to the basic interaction between a client as a, and a server that uh, I, uh, explain, I explained to you before. Uh, to get the list of repositories from, uh, from the server, you will need to use the session factory object and create a session uh, with a, a connection with a server. There, there are a lot of uh, parameters, but it's likely that you won't need all of them. It's mostly up to the server implementation, but th the basic ones are, of course, the URL and uh, your username and password for authentication. And once you have a session, uh, libcmis session uh, object, uh, you can call the get repositories uh, uh, method get a vector of repository pointers and then you can iter uh, iterate through them get uh, their IDs and names, expose the names to the user, whatever and once you have once you know the repository you, you want to act you will use the set repository uh, method in the session object to open it and now you can get the root folder with the get root folder uh, method in the session object once you have that root folder, you can use it to uh, navigate through the contents. You have the get children uh, method that will return you a vector of uh, libcmis objects. Uh, those object uh, those objects will have uh, name and ID and also some common uh, proper properties and you can use the get base type uh, method to check which uh, type they belong you will have a cmis folder and cmis document corresponding to the two basic types and once you know the that your object is a, a it's a, a folder you can cast uh, the object to a fo live cmis folder and then call the get children method again and continue uh, browsing the the contents. Once you have reached uh, the document you want, well, you it's time to check it out and uh, do something with it. Well, 
the first line is uh, an alternative way to access an, a CMIS object. You can access them navigating through the, with the get uh, get root folder, get children, etc. But you can also save their object IDs uh, somewhere and then get the CMIS objects back with the uh, get object method found in the session object. And that will return you a LCMIS object. You can check its type, cast it to a document uh, object, and then you can do the you can call checkout, and that will create a private working copy in the server. So you can uh, get the contents of that private working copy, uh, work with them, and then check it back in again. In case you don't want to save those contents, you have the cancel checkout uh, method that will uh, remove that private working copy from the server. But, uh, well, you still have to get the contents from the server and for that you can use the get content stream uh, method in the document that will return you a standard input stream uh, from C++. Uh, there's an optional parameter, as you can see, it's the stream ID. Well, some CMIS services, uh, servers might uh, expose several stream IDs for one object. That's something that's an optional part of the protocol. You can know about it uh, querying the when you query for, uh, the repository for its capabilities. It will it will tell you that if uh, it supports several stream IDs on one uh, document. It's not a usual case, but some servers do it and the, uh, and the protocol supports it. And well, once you have that uh, C++ input stream, you can do the common operations to, for example, write it to a file and then open it. And once you have done your modifications to that uh, content, it's time to check it into the server again. And you will need to fill some uh, some data to do it. Uh, you will have to tell the system, the server if it's a major uh, revision or, or not. You will have to add a comment telling what you have uh, modified in the, in the content. You might add a new set of proper, uh, properties. You can populate that property pointer map with uh, CMIS properties. You will have to specify a content type and a file name. And once you have done it, you can get again your private working copy using, for example, its ID, uh, cast it to a document uh, uh, object, and then use the checking method with all those uh, parameters to save again the contents on the of, uh, to the server. So uh, the, these uh, bits of code are extracted from the libcmis uh, command line client tool. So well, uh, you will need to fill the gaps, but still you can get a uh, working uh, client with uh, these bits and a bit of extra work. But if C or C++ is not your thing, you still have uh, open source uh, options uh, for you to help building C uh, CMIS uh, clients. You have the uh, Apache chemistry in on Java platforms or in .NET platforms. There are at least a couple of open source libraries for you to help it, uh, to help you to build um, uh, CMIS clients. So well, that, that was good for developers, but what about uh, end users? I'm an end user on my desktop, and I want to access some documents that my organization provides me in a SharePoint server. What can I do? Well, uh, first of all, uh, your uh, company must uh, enable the CMIS modules in your SharePoint server. Uh, I know that they are independent uh, modules that can be enabled or disabled. There's a client and a server module. Uh, as I said before, uh, SharePoint can act as both uh, 
types of uh, as both ends of the CMIS protocol. In SharePoint 2010, it was uh, part of a separate administration toolkit, and in 2013 version, it uh, it comes uh, uh, f w with a basic package, I think. But well, I'm not uh, going to tell you how to uh, do it uh, because well, I, don't I haven't maintained SharePoint servers, and there are plenty of Microsoft uh, experts here. You can uh, who can who will know much better than me. But regarding the LibreOffice side of things, well, I must uh, first a disclaimer: the sh uh, CMIS uh, or, uh, implementation is part of the LibreOffice uh, custom file dialogs. So first of all, you have to check if they are enabled or not, and this is done from the uh, from LibreOffice uh, settings screen. That setting use LibreOffice dialogs is the one you must uh, check. Once you have enabled LibreOffice custom file dialogs, this is the file dialog you will, you will find when you try to open uh, a document. In this dialog, you have the connect to server uh, button, and that button will uh, take you to a dialog where you can configure uh, the uh, the connection to the server, you can uh, you can uh, set it a name for future reference, a type. Uh, there are we support uh, several types of um, content servers, uh, not only through CMIS but with through uh, WebDAV, uh, FTP, Samba. Well, there are several options there. Uh, if you set a CMIS, uh, you will be able to set a server type. If you set SharePoint, it will fill you the with the binding URL for the SharePoint server. So you can, so you only need to fill the host here, and the, the rest of the URL is already written for you. And once this URL is correct, you can press this button here and it will list the repositories exposed by your server. You can select one, optionally set a path, press OK, and then you will be able to browse the contents like any other folder in your file system through this dialog. And th the server you have configured will, ap will appear here in this list as um, for, for, uh, for quick access in the future. So, uh, as you can see, this uh, implementation is, uh, it works, but it has some problems, and the biggest of all of them is that the feature is not visible to average users, because it is only uh, accessible through LibreOffice custom file dialogs, which might or might not be visible depending on the configuration, on the default configuration for dialogs in your uh, LibreOffice distribution. And it's true that most uh, LibreOffice providers have it uh, disabled by default. They use the system uh, file dialogs instead of LibreOffice own ones. So you have to go to that settings screen and manually select LibreOffice dialogs uh, to be able to access it. That's far from ideal. It hides the applica it hides the feature from average users, and that has a nasty consequence, which is that m less users are taking advantage of it and less users are testing it and provide uh, bug reports. So that leads to under average um, testing and maintenance of this uh, specific feature in LibreOffice. The good news is that this is going to change really soon because uh, the community design team has been taking a look into this uh, topic and uh, they have uh, set a plan to improve this feature with uh, this fo uh, the following set of goals. They would like to increase the visibility of the feature so more people can take advantage of it. They want to integrate it in the standard LibreOffice workflow without having to enable uh, obscure options in, this in the configuration. 
they would like to ease access to the most popular uh, storage services. And the good news is that this plan is already set. We have the the path uh, written. We have uh, mockups, and uh, there's a person working on it as a part of a Google Summer of Code project. So we expect that the work will be ready and available for everyone in the 5.1 release, which will happen early next year. Uh, to increase the visibility of the feature, a uh, uh, specific entry uh, for remote content will be added to LibreOffice Start Center. So it will, there will be a highlighted option in the Start Center together with the open templates and the new uh, kind of uh, new uh, uh, the entries for new documents. Uh, we will add uh, specific uh, menu options or uh, toolbar buttons to open from remote and save, for re uh, save from remote. This will increase visibility and integrate uh, this feature in the standard workflow of LibreOffice. There will be a specific dialog to open and save from remote locations, so you don't have to rely on having the custom file dialogs from LibreOffice enabled or not, and it will make the feature uh, independent from this uh, particular configuration entry. These dialogues will have a, wi um, well, a list of uh, recently asked ac accessed services and a way to add a service and uh, to edit the services with that um, you might have added before. And of course, a way to browse it like if they were uh, contents, uh, local contents in your desktop and to ease access to the most popular storage services. Uh, there will be dialogues to manage the different services, and the dialogues will mm, vary depending on the service you want to configure. So uh, they ask you for the minimum data you need to connect to that kind of server. An example, for, uh, an example is the, to set up a Google Drive connection. You actually don't need anything else than the, your Google uh, ID because well, LibreOffice already know about the, UR in the service URL and you need nothing else than that. If you want to connect to a SharePoint server through C CMIS, it might ask you for the, uh, the location of the, of the server, the, the host name, but uh, LibreOffice already knows about the URL uh, of the CMIS uh, service inside the, inside the SharePoint server, so you don't have to type it. And of course, there will be uh, generic entries for CMIS or WebDAV uh, uh, servers that might not be that popular, where you can uh, fill all the data uh, you need, all the uh, URL, uh, uh, login data, etc. But the point is that uh, we will have dialogues with the minimum uh, set of uh, options you need to configure the access to that server. So as a summary, well, we have known about the CMIS protocol. Uh, we know we can use it to for interoperability with uh, ECMs and specifically, uh, specifically with SharePoint. Uh, we have seen how you can use LibCMIS to develop your own C or C++ client. And of course, there are other open source options in the Java or .NET worlds. We uh, have seen how LibreOffice can connect to CMIS servers, the steps to configure that connection. And we have taken a look into the future and what will come next year to uh, improve this feature in LibreOffice and help everybody connect their access their documents everywhere they are so that's all i had to say thank you very much for your attention are there any questions Hi. Hi. Um, do you have any plans to support open by content? 
Uh, sorry? Open. Open by content. So Windows, I think, was the first one to come out with this. So Microsoft guys can confirm maybe 12, 15 years ago. Um, there is actually an option in Windows uh, that you can click such that um, the, uh, the open dialog box is also a search box for the contents of the files. And Windows file shares, if you do them right, are able to support that. And very uh, th that means that, for example, on a Samba share, if you have the right search index on the back end, uh, there can be some support. Uh -huh. uh, yes, of course, if you are using LibreOffice and Windows and uh, Windows already supports it, you will have seamless access to it. In uh, Linux or Mac builds of LibreOffice, you can use this method to access Samba contents. Um, but we don't have a specific support. So there would need to be search semantics in the dialogue you, you're putting there, a way of communicating with the back end. Oh, maybe we can talk about that with the team. Mm -hmm. It seems like a good unified access point to, to do that. Yeah, there's um, like a second phase of this plan to improve the, the file dialogues in LibreOffice. And uh, the plan is that they uh, is to provide more powerful search options in them. So that might be uh, definitely uh, Good, an option talk we could check. I'll talk to the team. Great, thank you. Hi, my question is regarding the the protocol. When it says a document, does it say it's a completed document or only only the chunk files as Office does? That's up to the implementation. But uh, as uh, libcmis works, you send all the content stream to the server. Okay. I have a question. Um, I see that you su uh, it supports SharePoint 2010-2013. I didn't see Office 365. Is there any specific reason for that, or because mm. it should be relatively easy to support, or not? Yeah, it should be pretty easy. Actually, uh, we might take uh, advantage to this conference to look into the, the details of that option and probably add it as a quick access option in uh, future releases of LibreOffice. Yeah, I think it will make a lot of sense because then you might get Microsoft aligned with your strategy and you have the people here to talk with them. Yeah, definitely. There are, there are already options to access to Google Drive, uh, Dropbox, so yeah, it I makes a that. lot of sense. Yeah. yeah. No more questions? Okay. Thank you, Jacobo. Very interesting. Thank you.